Welcome back once again, moving on to chapter six. In this chapter, we're gonna take a look at the project schedule management. So I'm gonna give you a lot of the detailed activities on your project and how you actually work with them. Since I've tried to make this course a little more practical, right? So you understand how project management works. So here I'm gonna talk about the plan schedule management, which is the process of establishing the policies, procedures, telling all your teams, whether it's your development team, QA team, and other BA teams, what and how things need to be done, giving them a schedule of activities, defining those activities, sequencing those activities. And we're going to talk about also the developing of the schedule and controlling the schedule. By scheduling, I mean a task schedule. So those of you who are comfortable with Microsoft Project, for example, uh, that's a great product or tool to use. And there are others that you can also use as well. I'm going to give you a couple of different flavors of what those are and some hands-on as well, so you get to see how to use these tools in successfully managing these activities for your project. So let's jump right in and take a look at the schedule management of the project. Welcome back. Moving on to chapter six, we are going to talk about project schedule management. I have kind of mentioned in the previous lessons, I've also demonstrated using Microsoft Project Schedules and creating the tasks and subtasks. Here, we are going to look at uh, the overall project schedule management, and I'm going to give you some additional tips and techniques in using the schedule management or how to create the schedule as a project manager. So here's the overview. We know that the schedule management includes the processes or the tasks required to manage the timely completion of the project. And some of the management processes are the plan schedule management, you define the activities, you sequence your activities, estimate activity durations, and then finally you develop a schedule and then you control it, manage it, so to speak. So here's the breakdown. Again, we did briefly talked about this in the previous lessons, but here it is again because this is one of the formidable processes or aspects of project management. So here's the overview. After the overview, we are going to look at the project schedule management overview, which is 6.1, again from chapter six, coming from the PMBOK guide. So from 6.1, two, three, four, five, and then six, right? So these are the three steps that, that basically entail or comprise of the schedule plan management, which is simply a detailed plan that represents how and when the project will deliver in the product services and the results defined within the scope. The project management team selects the scheduling method, such as the critical path or an agile approach. So here is something new, right? So you can either use the critical path methodology in managing your schedule, or you can use the agile approach. Again, depending on how you would wish to approach your project. Certain project managers, they, they like the, the agile approach or the scrum, they enjoy that methodology. So depending on the project too, you can either create any one of these. The precedence diagramming method, in other words, using the technique called the precedence technique. What that simply means, before I read this on the slide, what that simply means is, for instance, if you have a task that is dependent on another task, if you set the PDM or the precedence method, that would imply that the previous task must be completed before you can do the subsequent task. Kind of makes sense, right? In other words, one step has to be completed, like a waterfall approach, right? So if you're into software development, you understand this. But if not, that's fine. Um, let's explain it again. So it's like a waterfall, step by step. So task number one needs to be completed before you can do task two. Similarly, task two must be completed before you can do task three. So this way you can do the or set the precedence within your project schedule. And I want to demonstrate that hands-on as well so you get the concepts clear by looking at the application, not just the concept. So the PDM is simply a technique used for constructing a schedule model in which activities are represented by nodes 
and are graphically linked by one or more relationships to show the sequence in which the activities are to be performed. PDM includes four types of dependencies or logical relationships like finish to finish, start to finish, and I'm going to talk about those as well. The predecessor activity is an activity that logically comes before a dependent activity in a schedule, just like step by step. And a successor activity is the dependent activity that logically comes after another activity in a schedule. So here are the four relationship types. The first one is finish to start, which is denoted by FS, which is a logical relationship in which a successor activity cannot start until a predecessor activity has finished. For example, if you were to install the operating system on a PC, which is a successor task, that cannot start until the PC hardware is assembled, which is a predecessor. And that makes sense, right? So similarly, next is finish to finish, which is simply, for example, writing a document, which is a predecessor, is required to finish before editing the document. And that kind of makes sense again, because you can't really edit a document unless you have a document. Then we have the start to start, which is, for example, a level concrete successor cannot begin until poor foundation begins. And finally, the start to finish, as an example, the new accounts payable system has to start before the old account payable system can be shut down. And that kind of makes sense too, start to finish. So just go through these. And I think if you're preparing for the exam, it's kind of good to know each one of these. And even as a project manager in the real world, you ought to know these relationships because the more complex the project becomes, your experience would count. But for simple projects, you would typically do the finish to start, right? So one stops or the, the first activity finishes, then you start the next activity. So just spend some time on this. If you have any questions, post them in the discussion area as well. Then we have the concept of leads and lags, right? So lead is simply the amount of time a successor activity can be advanced with respect to the predecessor activity. So for example, if you are constructing a new office building, for example, right, that's a project, the landscaping could be scheduled to start two weeks prior to the scheduled punch list completion. And that's one of the examples, right? So before you actually start the actual project, a pre-task such as landscaping, you need to schedule that a couple of weeks prior. This would be shown as a finish to start with a two-week lead time, right? And that makes sense. Similarly, a lag is the amount of time the successor activity will be delayed with respect to the predecessor activity. So for example, a technical writing team may begin editing the draft of a large document 15 days after they begin writing it, right? So that would be the 15 day lag time as shown in the right side of this small diagram, right? So you write the draft, then you do the SS, right? Which is start to start relationship. And then you say minus, minus 15 days, which is the lag. Whereas in the first diagram, the lead example, coming back to that, complete the punch list and that's finish to start with a two week lead. So that kind of makes sense. So go through this as well, leads and lags. This could become tricky, but it'll be easier once you practice, right? And that's that's the only way you can get better at this, uh, trust me. So you have to practice, you have to understand the types of relationships, and then just go at it, practice, practice, so that you get perfect at it. Here's the project schedule network diagram. So lags can also be represented in the project schedule. I'm gonna demonstrate that next. Network diagrams. So for example, below in the diagram, you'll notice that the relationship between H and I, as indicated by SS, which is start to start plus 10 days lag, even though the offset is not shown relative to the time scale. So if you're going from H to I, you'll do a SS plus 
10 days lag, right? So again, based on your own project requirements, you can schedule and play with the schedule accordingly. And that's an important role of the project manager is using the right tool and understanding the tool and then managing the project. And then finally, you end up developing the entire schedule, which is simply the process of analyzing or taking all of those sequence of activities, tasks, subtasks, and laying them out in the diagram. Perfect. So before I actually do the recap of this lesson, I promise to do a demonstration of the project schedule and just kind of give you the overview, high level overview, because I'm not going to go in depth in explaining all these four relationships. That's going to take quite a bit of time. I'm going to leave that as a homework and then maybe a future course that I'll do on project server itself where I can demonstrate just focusing on those. But just for now, let's switch to the project schedule so you can see how some of these work. Perfect. So here's the the real world scenario where I've developed this project schedule. And notice uh, this is, by the way, a live project, right, that, that we did a few years ago. So from the QA perspective, which is on row 172, is where the quality assurance team begins their work, right? So the development is complete from the top, coming from the top. And then now the project entered the QA phase, okay? So within the QA phase, for example, if I need to do some or set some precedence, right? So notice this is the precedent column. So within the predecessors, you can set the predecessors. So if I'm using the agile approach, for example, I would set the or waterfall approach or critical path method that you will see later on here uh, within the Gantt chart that is being displayed. But here, just a simple predecessor would mean that if the test case designing task must be completed before the writing begins, I would set a predecessor in row number 181. So right under the column of predecessor, I would set row 180, which is again the test case designing row, right? A one above. So that would mean, if I hit the enter key, that now the test case designing task must be completed before test case writing can begin. So that's really a simple example of setting a predecessor. And then of course, within the resource name, you can select the employee. I'm not gonna click on the drop down list because there are a bunch of employees. So after you set the predecessor, you can of course select the resource name from this column and then add the resource name. In other words, the individual who is responsible to complete the task called test case writing. So you as a project manager would, since you've allocated two hours for this task, in your weekly meeting or daily scrum call or however way you wanna set up your meetings, you would ask this person, hey, have you completed the test case writing? And the person is gonna say, yep, yeah, I've done it. And this is gonna be 100% complete and so on. So a very powerful uh, way to manage your project schedule. Similarly, if you would like to work with the finish to start, for example, and other types of relationships, you could do so. For example, I could do 2FS plus 3 days, right? 3D. That means it's going to change the dates around accordingly. So based on this type of finish to start relationship, plus 3 is going to add 3 days to my schedule starting from the high level or the top level task because each top level task has subtasks, right? So based on this type of relationship, it's gonna move the schedule. So that way you as a project manager, if there are delays from the client side or the from your internal organization, you can adjust the schedule. And remember, we also talked about the baseline dates. You can add a column called baseline dates where you can set the dates which are not going to change. So even though these dates are going to change because your project changes, the baseline dates are going to remain constant. So you can kind of take a look at all of these options that you can use for your baseline dates, finish, estimates, and there are a whole bunch of other tools, powerful sets of tools that you can use within your project. So all of these columns, by the way, that you see here are added or can be added using new columns or you can add additional columns as well. 
So I just want to give you this high level overview. Okay, I'm not going to go into too much detail in how to actually set all these predecessors, but I give you a, a fairly solid idea of how you can work with it. So as a homework, you can definitely play with it, work with it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to explain these relationships further or any other questions that you may have. So I hope this helps. Practice with this. And let's move to the next lesson.